Hello everybody and welcome to Innovesting. You may have heard a lot of excitement and discussions about lithium recently. With the EV adoption ramping up across the globe, driving up the demand for lithium-ion batteries, the price of lithium has reached all-time highs in recent months. Many lithium mining companies listed on the ASX have also peaked recently, with some more than doubling in stock price since the beginning of the year. On top of that, there are several exciting technology developments and things to look forward to around the lithium and battery market. In this video, we will unpack the factors driving the demand for lithium, we'll talk about the current market and technology trends, discuss what the future for lithium-ion batteries could be like, and mention some investment opportunities that you can watch for. As Lithium America CEO John Evans stated, lithium is like the blood in your body. It isn't even the main component in batteries. In fact, in a typical electric vehicle battery, less than 20% of the battery is lithium, but it is arguably the most important component. Being the third element in the periodic table, it has one outer electron which it's ready to lose, making it highly reactive. It is also the lightest metal, combined with a high reactivity, allows lithium to have high energy densities, meaning it can store a lot of energy relative to its weight. On top of that, lithium-ion batteries are rechargeable. These properties make them the perfect cathode material for batteries. Sony commercialized the first type of lithium-ion battery in 1991, which was the lithium cobalt oxide or LCO battery. Up to now, this type of battery is still commonly used in modern electronic devices such as our laptops and phones. LCO batteries are good enough to power smaller devices, but not for bigger ones. Also, a major drawback of cobalt is that it is very expensive. So throughout the 1990s, researchers began developing batteries with other materials. One of those materials is nickel, since nickel is cheaper, and it was discovered that substituting cobalt with nickel in lithium-ion batteries led to similar energy densities. Adding too much nickel though made the battery more prone to fire hazards, and although nickel is more affordable than cobalt, it is still quite expensive. So additional materials such as aluminum, manganese, and phosphate were brought in to improve the safety and cost of batteries. Over time, these led to the discoveries of batteries suitable for EVs such as the NCM, NCA, and LFP batteries. These stand for the Nickel Cobalt Manganese, Nickel Cobalt Aluminum, and Lithium Iron Phosphate batteries. Most of the EVs produced up to now used one of these three batteries. So what caused the sudden boom in electric vehicles and lithium? Well, due to climate change, many people are now more conscious of the need to reduce emissions and reach net zero by 2050, and electric vehicles are a great way of decarbonizing transport. Thanks to the advancements in battery technologies, the cost of lithium-ion batteries has rapidly declined over the past few years. Bloomberg estimates that in five more years, electric vehicles will be cheaper to produce than internal combustion engine cars, which will likely further accelerate EV adoption. At the same time, many countries are incentivizing the public to purchase EVs, and we are already seeing growing consumer preferences for it. EV sales has been increasing year on year all over the world, at a rate faster than what many analysts expected. Tesla has achieved record-breaking sales in the past quarter, with more than 310,000 electric vehicles sold, almost doubling its sales from the same quarter in 2021. The recent and ongoing Russian and Ukraine war pushing up the price of oil can also drive consumers away from internal combustion engine cars to electric vehicles, since it'll be much more expensive refueling than charging an EV. With all this growth in EVs, the supply of lithium is struggling to keep up. It only takes two to three years for a battery gigafactory to be built, but it can take more than five years for a lithium mining and extraction project to become online. This is because you have to explore, obtain licenses, conduct feasibility studies, and spend a lot of time and money building and constructing a mining site. Many analysts believe we won't have enough lithium supply to meet the demand over the coming years. All these factors driving up the demand with limited supply have caused the price of lithium to go to all-time highs. Several analysts believe we are already in a lithium deficit. And the scary part is, we're only at the beginning of the electric vehicle adoption. In 2020, there were just above 10 million EVs on the road globally, and in 2030, that number is expected to rise to 145 million, and maybe even 230 million if the world governments put in more efforts tackling climate change. To feed the growing market of EVs, the world needs more lithium. 
Australia having the world's second largest lithium sources with an estimated 5.7 million tons in 2022, with several emerging lithium projects commencing later this decade, will play a big role in the lithium market. In 2021, Australia produced 55,000 tons of lithium and was ranked the number one country for the amount of lithium produced, followed by Chile, China and Argentina. There are two ways of obtaining lithium. The first way is through hard rock mining, which involves digging through the ground and mining spodumene ores, which contain lithium, and these spodumene ores are then crushed heated, and go through a series of chemical processes before they turn into lithium carbonate or lithium hydroxide, which are then sent to make batteries. So far, all of the lithium production in Australia has come from hard rock mining. The second way of producing lithium is through extracting lithium from underground brines. From there, the brine can be sent to evaporation ponds, where the sun evaporates all the water content from the brine, leaving the lithium behind. Or, using a newer technology known as direct lithium extraction, the lithium can be directly filtered out from the brine within hours or days, which is much faster than the evaporation process, which can take up to two years. The lithium from brine then gets turned into lithium carbonate. If lithium hydroxide is preferred, an additional step is required to turn the lithium carbonate to lithium hydroxide. Both lithium carbonate and lithium hydroxide can be used for making batteries. Lithium hydroxide are more commonly used to make those high nickel content batteries such as the NCM and NCA batteries, while lithium carbonate are used for the LFP batteries. For a long time between 2010 and 2020, the NCA and NCM batteries were considered the best batteries for EVs thanks to their high energy density. Tesla was using the NCA batteries, while others such as Ford, Nissan and BMW were using the NCM batteries. That is until mid-2021, when Tesla first announced that it'll be shifting all its standard range vehicles, including the latest Tesla Model 3, to use lithium iron phosphate batteries. And soon after that, other major EV manufacturers, including Volkswagen, Mercedes-Benz, and Ford, all followed the trend and started using LFP batteries. LFP batteries have a few advantages over nickel-based batteries. They have higher thermal stability, which means they are less likely to catch fire. They also have at least three times as much maximum charge and discharge cycles, meaning they will have a longer lifetime. But the biggest advantage of LFP batteries is its low cost, since it contains no nickel or cobalt. The main drawback of LFP batteries is that it has a much lower energy density. LFP batteries in Tesla cars are around 120 to 150 watt hours per kilogram, which is much lower than NCM batteries, which can easily reach more than 200 watt hours per kilogram. But, Tesla's LFP battery is still enough to power the car for more than 250 kilometers, which is probably enough for most people. So what's the future for lithium and lithium-ion batteries? Well, in the short term, the ongoing inflation and rising interest rates may stall people from buying any vehicles. But if the demand for lithium continues to grow, then governments and companies will have to increase investments in lithium extraction to accelerate growing lithium supply. Several lithium projects around the world are slowly coming online over the next few years, including those from some ASX-listed companies. Lithium extraction projects such as Lake Resources, ticker LKE, will be producing about 50 tons per annum of lithium carbonate by 2024, while Vulcan Energy Resources, ticker VUL, also plans to commence its direct extract lithium and produce 40,000 tons per annum of lithium hydroxide by 2024. Hard rock mining companies such as Core Lithium, ticker CXO, will be starting to produce up to 175,000 ton per annum of spodumene from the Finnis Lithium project starting near the end of 2022. That's about 13,000 ton per annum of lithium carbonate, assuming 7.5 tons of spodumene converts to 1 ton of lithium carbonate. Piedmont Lithium Inc., ticker PLL, owns several lithium projects in the US and Africa, and they will be producing more than 260,000 ton per annum of spodumene, or 35,000 ton per annum of lithium carbonate, for PLL. These boosts in lithium supply may alleviate some of the demand issues in the short term, but in the long term, many analysts believe we will still be in a lithium deficit. Besides mining and extracting lithium, lithium can also come from recycling. Unfortunately though, we are barely recycling any lithium-ion batteries, and most of them just end up in the landfill. 
The US Department of Energy estimated less than 5% of the lithium-ion batteries are recycled in America. In Australia, it's even worse. CSIRO estimated only 2% of lithium-ion batteries in Australia are recycled. This is mainly due to the additional costs needed to recycle them, but also it's a complicated process. There are still lots of research going on at the moment looking to improve battery recycling processes to make it safer, more cost-effective, and more efficient. But as the lithium supply shortage gets worse in the future, we may see additional funding and investments made towards growing and accelerating better recycling processes. ASX battery recycling company Neo Meadows, ticker NMT, recently formed an agreement with Mercedes-Benz to construct a 2,500 ton per annum battery recycling plant that will be capable of recycling the latest, most advanced lithium-ion battery chemistries. The battery recycling company EnviroStream, owned by ASX company Lithium Australia, ticker LIT, is one step ahead and has already started its battery recycling services since 2017. Lithium Australia also owns a battery manufacturing company called VSBC, which is capable of manufacturing LFP batteries. They are currently conducting a definitive feasibility study of a 10,000 ton per annum LFP battery manufacturing facility, which is scheduled to be completed by the end of 2022. With many of the major automakers switching to LFP batteries, LFP batteries are expected to outgrow the other battery types, so Lithium Australia is well positioned to take part of the growing lithium and LFP battery demand. Note, so far in this video, we only talked about batteries for EVs. We haven't even talked about the lithium needed for batteries in the stationary energy storage market. If the world cannot produce enough lithium, it may force them to look for different battery materials. For example, the company Redflow, ticker RFX, claims they have developed the world's smallest zinc bromide flow battery which can be used for grid energy storage and backup power applications. Speaking of different materials, one of the world's largest battery manufacturers, CATL, who also happens to be supplying batteries to Tesla, is commercializing a novel sodium ion battery. As the name suggests, it used sodium as the cathode instead of lithium, and sodium is much more abundant and cheaper than lithium. CATL showcased their first generation sodium ion battery in 2021, which already achieved an energy density of 160 watt hours per kilogram. They are still improving the battery performance and are working towards an energy density of more than 200 watt hours per kilogram. The company claims they can start manufacturing their sodium ion batteries by 2023. If they can really commercialize a high performance, fast charging, and cost competitive sodium ion battery, then they have the potential to completely disrupt the lithium and lithium ion battery market. So it's an exciting time for the renewable energy industry, particularly for lithium and batteries. We are already seeing all these demand rises and we're only at the start of an EV revolution. Future lithium supply as well as innovations into new battery materials and battery recycling are likely going to be the key drivers for the lithium market in the future and it will be interesting to see how all these play out. Let me know what you think about lithium and batteries in the comment section below and leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. For now, stay well, stay healthy, and stay tuned for future videos.